Iraq may have faced many big problems over the years, but the Mosul Dam could be the biggest threat yet. If the dam fails, a massive wave would flood cities and towns along the Tigris River from Mosul all the way down to Amara and even Basra. Within four days, Baghdad would be under 5 meters of water. Experts predict that this disaster could kill anyone from 500,000 to over a million people. Imagine trying to get electricity, clean water, food, medical help, and transportation for millions of people in that kind of chaos. But what can be done? Let's find out. Mosul Dam, located on the Tigris River about 60 kilometers northwest of Mosul City, is one of Iraq's key strategic projects for water resource management. Construction began in January 1981 and the dam became operational in July 1986. It serves multiple purposes, providing water for irrigation, controlling floods and generating hydropower. The dam stands 113 meters high and 3,650 meters long with a 10 meter wide crest. The dam's construction cost was estimated at 2.6 billion US dollars in the 1980s. It includes a concrete spillway on the left abutment, which can discharge up to 12,600 cubic meters of water a second. Seepage was first detected in the winter of 1986 when the reservoir level increased. Water began leaking from six major springs downstream and from under the dam, indicating gypsum dissolution from the foundation rocks. This seepage has continued to be a concern, with large amounts of minerals leaching from the dam's foundations over time. Initial rates of gypsum dissolution were high, but eventually they stabilized, though the ongoing dissolution still poses a significant risk to the dam's integrity. Unfortunately, the critical seepage measurements from under the Mosul Dam and the river section stopped early on. This happened because the downstream temporary coffer dam flooded when the reservoir started filling. However, measurements from the left bank springs continue to this day, though the data isn't publicly available. No seepage measurements were planned or taken in the grouting gallery. This issue has remained largely internal to the Iraqi Ministry of Water Resources until the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers highlighted the potential for dam failure in a study conducted from June 2004 to July 2006. Media coverage in 2014, especially during the ISIS occupation of the dam site, brought more attention to the risk, with estimates suggesting that a failure could result in around half a million deaths and a significant property and infrastructure damage, including that in Baghdad. The Mosul Dam has a complex geology, primarily featuring the Lower Fars, Fatha Formation, with layers of limestone, marl, and gypsum. The dam's abutments are situated on the upper member of this formation, which has more claystone compared to the lower member, resulting in different mechanical behaviors under load. Karstification is more pronounced in the lower member due to its composition. There are two notable faults in the dam site area, one being a rotational fault and the other trending along the Tigris River's right bank. Despite these geological complexities, no significant tectonic activity has been reported that would pose a hazard to the dam. Several investigations have modeled the area's complex geology, showing that while there are some small faults, they don't present a significant threat to the dam's stability. Thus, while the dam's geological setting is intricate, the main concern remains the ongoing seepage and the potential for a dissolution of the gypsum foundation. The geology of the Mosul Dam site has presented several problems during its construction, impounding, and operation. Seepage issues identified after impounding in 1986 are primarily due to geological challenges. Karstification in the foundation rocks is a significant geological hazard. This process, which involves the extensive dissolution of gypsum and andrite rocks, has been documented by numerous studies. It extends up to 100 meters below the dam's foundation, resulting in the collapse of clay marls into underlying cavities and forming beds of brecciated gypsum and andrite blocks with a loose clay matrix. Four such layers have been identified, with thickness ranging between 8 and 16 meters. Surface cracking and groundwater fluctuations have led to the development of sinkholes. Notably, a sinkhole appeared suddenly on the left flank of the reservoir in February 2003, and others have been observed downstream on the right side of the dam. These sinkholes are caused by the dissolution of surface gypsum beds and the formation of conduits due to groundwater flow from the Wadi Mala Aquifer. Bathymetric surveys in 2011 identified numerous sinkholes within the reservoir area, posing a significant risk if they connect to the aquifer. Springs have appeared downstream, aligned with sinkholes with flows reaching 360 liters per second. 
These springs indicate high sulfate concentrations, suggesting gypsum dissolution. The Wadi Mala Aquifer has contributed to construction difficulties and ongoing issues with sinkholes on the right bank downstream of the dam. Geological Condition Deterioration The Rock Quality Designation RQD test performed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in 1989 and 2006 showed significant deterioration due to gypsum dissolution. The deep curtain grouting, investigated over the years, revealed extensive deterioration, with some areas requiring frequent regrouting. The dissolution front has progressed eastward at an average rate of about 17 meters a year. Recent Developments and Concerns Despite continuous grouting efforts for over 30 years, the situation has worsened, particularly after grouting operations halted in 2014 due to ISIS's control of the dam. Subsequent U.S.-led surveys identified increased sulfate concentrations, more caverns and sinkholes, and increased monolith movement in the grouting gallery. Settlement records from 1986 to 2015 showed significant cumulative settlement, indicating ongoing gypsum dissolution. Satellite data from 2004 to 2010 revealed a subsidence rate of 12.5 mm a year, which increased to 15 mm a year after 2013. The geological and engineering challenges at Mosul Dam, particularly the ongoing dissolution of gypsum and the development of sinkholes and cavities, present serious risks to the dam's stability and the safety of the surrounding areas. Potential Solutions Since the seepage problem began at Mosul Dam, numerous solutions have been proposed and evaluated by various experts and organizations. The International Board of Experts IBOE, appointed by the Ministry of Irrigation held multiple meetings with designers and contractors to discuss these issues. Reports from other consultants and experts were also considered. Among the proposed solutions, the precipitation of insoluble materials like sodium chloride into seepage water was rejected because the injected fluid's flow could not be predicted and the volume was insufficient to fill seepage paths. Another suggestion was to protect gypsum and andrite surfaces by sealing them with a saturated solution of SO4 or using a chemical solution like calcium oxalate. This idea was dismissed due to the large quantities of gypsum removed daily, the unpredictability of seepage flow paths, and the toxicity of calcium oxalate. Using barriers was another proposed solution. One method involved blanketing the upstream side of the dam and reservoir with bentonite pellets and sand though this has not been tried before in reservoirs. Constructing a positive cutoff wall was also suggested, but it was considered too risky due to the height, hardness of strata, presence of cavities, and difficulty in maintaining panel verticality. Another idea was to reinforce the existing curtain with additional rows of boreholes, which was deemed feasible due to available machinery and grouting capacity. An expert consulted by the ministry recommended widening the grout curtain by drilling additional rows of boreholes in a specific sequence. This proposal was accepted by the board. He also suggested constructing a tunnel for grouting, though this required further feasibility studies. Building tunnels and galleries to replace risky material faced similar feasibility concerns. Despite continuous grouting efforts and various maintenance works, the Mosul Dam continues to show signs of weakness. The dissolution of gypsum leads to sinkholes and structural instability. And while grouting can temporarily address these issues, it can't stop the ongoing dissolution and may even weaken the rocks further. To manage these risks, it's recommended to keep the reservoir water level as low as possible based on updated risk analysis. Grouting operations should continue and the existing monitoring program should be evaluated and upgraded with new instrumentation to identify critical areas for grouting. Additionally, early warning systems should be developed to detect changing conditions that might indicate potential failure mechanisms. An emergency action plan should be developed and implemented, ensuring public awareness. A panel of experts should be established to review the status of the grouting program and any new developments every three months. Since grouting alone is not a permanent solution, other alternatives must be carefully studied. Long-term solutions could include constructing a diaphragm wall, completing Badish Dam, or a hybrid approach. Addressing these recommendations is crucial to ensure the safety and stability of Mosul Dam and protect the downstream population and infrastructure. We are committed to releasing two videos a week. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more visionary builds.